Hi, YouTube Pipe community. We're at the Chicago Pipe Show 2016, the biggest pipe show in the history of the Chicago Pipe Show. Just look at these pipe nerds. It's Just the most eclectic green. group of people you'll ever meet. And if you're not here, you should be. But when you're here, you probably don't want to meet them all. I'm here with Mike McNeil of McClellan. How are you doing? I'm here to show you an O2 can of Frog Morton. This was created in 1994 for a man named Barry Levin. Very few of you will remember him because he's been gone a long time. But we invented Frog Morton. My, my wife actually owns the company. I work for her and she actually invented Frog Morton. Not only did she invent it, she actually watercolored the label for the tins. On all the Frog Mortons, my wife has painted all the labels. And Frog Morton's probably one of the best selling show them selling. There they are. Oh God, go, go grab a second. And there's Mary who does not want to be on camera. But too late. Amen. Oh, there's some down here too. There you go. This frog cellar is probably one of the best things I've ever thought of with the wooden stave, the two inch piece and the big cans and one inch cubes. These are cut from an eight year old bourbon barrel, which will go unnamed because so, I don't want to get sued. <laughs> Man, I would. I'd have five lawyers trying to kill me before I got out of here. But I sent her home. I said, I want you to paint Frog Morton Cellar. I came home three hours later. It was finely watercolored, and it was done. This one I worked on for probably four months, day and night, seven days a week. Whoa. I couldn't come up with it. I was sitting on my porch in 100 degrees in a screened-in porch smoking my pipe at midnight telling my wife I'd been defeated. For the first time in my life, I was defeated. And she said, did you stow some Red Virginia? I said, I did, but I don't think it's working. She said, go down to work, go pick up the Red Virginia. We have triple beam scales in the house because I'm always messing around. <laughs> so I drove to work, got back at one. She re-blended it while I sat there thinking I was defeated. And we did it, and it was perfect. Wow, so right in the middle of the night. Yeah, who yeah. has the brains in the family <laughs> and, and at the company. And without her, I would be out on the street, not even with a piece of cardboard <laughs> telling you I need money. <laughs> so that's where Frog Morton Cellars, she hand-painted it. It's incredible. Oh, it's universally loved. There's well, well, a lot yeah. of people have made videos about that and made the wonderful next, comments. The next thing we're going to do, which was called the Holy Grail in the Columbus newspaper, the only reason we didn't do it, the guy that wrote it, Andy, whatever his name is, I can't remember, said it was the Holy Grail of the back. It was, Rich Esserman says it, too. The only reason I don't have it here, she tried to watercolor the Balkan Beauty woman on the label, okay. and she didn't like it. Okay. We will have that product in two months. My wife's very precise. If she doesn't like what she's painted, we can't come out with the product. All right. In two months, we'll have it. And, so that's uh, going to be Bulk and Beauty. Bulk and Beauty. Is it, yes. It's not part of the Frog series, then? No. It'll be a separate no, series? No. All right. And we'll look for it. If Esserman says it's good, it's, it's good. Because yeah. you know how he is. He's picky. You had a Bulk and Beauty in the Last contest year, uh, about three years ago. Is it a kind of a takeoff on that one? Right. And everybody loved it. Oh, yes. It will be the same. I'm just waiting for her to paint the picture. Oh, then I can recommend it myself. Yes. It's excellent. Yes. So, uh... There it is. It's Frogmort. My wife invented it. Actually, all the blends. The only, the only thing I came up with was the cube. I thought about I used to age tobacco in whiskey barrels, but it never worked because every time you go in it to flip, the de-essence comes out. Right. So what we do, actually, is we sand the outside of the barrel to get the scum off. And then we cut the cubes. We quickly put them in glass jars. Okay. Then, when you can, you drop the cube in the tobacco, bam, you seal it. Right. you got to be fast right. because, you know, alcohol, it's going away. That's you right. Know, when you, you can't put any alcohol in tobacco. 
it ruins the cells, everything's ruined. Huh. Sugars, everything's ruined. It never works. I've done over 7,300 experiments overall with tobacco. Wow. Never worked, but I thought, one day, I thought, I'm looking at my barrels. I thought, well, you stupid moron. Why don't you cut a piece of barrel and put one in every can? Sure, reverse the process. So I jumped off the dock with a saw, and I saw the piece. I said, well, pfft, there it is. You've been stupid for years. <laughs> so there it is. That's the end of that story. That's fantastic. And I have one more idea. Nobody's ever put a foreign object in a can in tobacco history. I know that because I've got 43 years in. That's right. I got one more idea, which I'm not going to tell you about. And the only reason I don't do it is because my wife won't let me because our All sales right. are too good. <laughs> but I'll do it. Before. She wants to see you at home once in a while, well, anyway. Yeah, well, you didn't see me at home. But I, if I do it, it'll be the first time anybody's ever thought of it. You try to do things that have never been done before in history. That's the name of this town. That's and fantastic. the guys that were the really great ones, Richard Dunhill, Charles Ravray, they're all gone and they've left it up to me. So there it is. That's right. That's the handoff. All right. So now we have this 2002 10, and Tom would like to have you open it open and it describe uh, what you see. You sure? Absolutely. They're one of the most expensive oh sounds God. in the world. Wow. It, it's it's really darkened down the Orientals. We use number one grade boss man now. Uh -huh. They've really darkened down. Way back. They've almost turned. I mean, they're dark brown. That's right. It's so very this would be way lighter. See if you had an open one. Well, open it. I'll let you do it, boss. So here's a 2015 tin, probably. Oh yeah. Look at the difference. Camera picking that up. That's what the age does. How about that? How about the scent? Has the scent changed? Oh yeah, it's for this is more fermented. What happens with with uh, a lot of tobaccos? They'll age out, and they almost get a chocolatey smell, even oh, yeah. though there's no chocolate on it. Uh -huh. There's a fermentation process that happens. The way we can, which I won't describe exactly how we do it, it'll start fermenting in 30 days. I can smell it. So what you want to do is. Get your cans. If you like some, buy a lot of it. Yep. Doesn't matter what it is. Save them for five years. A lot of guys like to save them five years. Yep. And then open them and just rotate out. And, uh, you know, the backers aren't going to be any cheaper than they are now. And if you love something, go get it because who knows what the future is. That is exactly right. Now, there's a difference between the American tins and the British tins uh, and the Danish tins. The Europeans tend to vacuum seal their tins. These are vacuum. These are these have a vacuum these, on them. I, I tell you something, and I like wet. One thing I like is Wessex Gold Flake. Uh huh. I've always liked it, and I like smoking it in clays. There's a guy here that makes clays from the 200-year-old molds. Right. They're like ten dollars a piece. That's right. They I are a cheap. A whole bunch of them. I use those for testing. I don't use briars right. for testing at all. We only use clays yep. and meerschaums. And a lot of you guys don't smoke meerschaums. Meerschaums are some of the finest pipes ever invented. That's I, my experience. I highly recommend those. We tested yep. that. What I noticed, even though a lot of people think when you suck down a bag and or a can, it's sealed. It isn't either. Mm -hmm. If you take 100 cans, and I've done this, 100 cans of Wessex Gold, it's right. in the closet. Right. I open the closet door. Why am I smelling it? Right. You it's can't. It's coming right. through the compound. And it's air's going in and out of that compound. Right, otherwise you wouldn't smell it. Right, even in a bag, it won't suck down. Air's, it does too, it's getting in. Yep. So what Mike Butera does is a picky genius. He's a jackass, but he's a, he's a quality-minded jackass. <laughs> well, he's got some of the best blends out yeah, there, yes. Had, Butera had a bunch of old three nuts. He loves it. And the cans were popping on the shelf. I mean, okay. you're like 50 years old. Wow. So what he would do was he would get a food saver and food saver each can in yep. its own bag to give that added pressure so the air conditioning 
and the heating cooling is not getting to the compound. That's right. I further told them what I would do is wrap each can in tin foil, yep. in aluminum foil, then seal it. Now you got a barrier. The air's not going to go through the, right. the foil. Right. It'll, it'll still go through the plastic's horrible. Never store anything in plastic. It always should be in a glass jar. Okay. This is sealed up. The compound sealed tall. I mean, you can put it in water for five years. It right. doesn't matter. Right. You got aluminum. This is coated right. food grade. This this is made by a gigantic company for the food industry, and it sure. has the coating in it for green beans, corn, whatever they put in. So it's all so it, food grade. Yeah, it's still, look at it. Yeah. It looks like they just put it on. That's perfect from 2002. Right, food grade. I've seen them for 30 years look great. And you want the aluminum. The little cans are aluminum. They're also coated. But all your flats, you've got to... I bought one, and I wrap it in foil. I do each can. It's tedious, but then it can sit there. Then you open the closet, you don't smell Don't smell a thing, exactly. exactly. So if you have really old cans, like the tyrannies, you go into the closet, it's popped. That's right. You granted the compound over time, the tobacco's after it. Right. Not mine, because it's curled over. It can't get to the compound. Right. Because That's right. it'll live. But the flats, it will. And they'll pop just sitting there. Some of them don't. And if anybody out there, anybody, has canned cigarettes that are bloated up and nice, call me. I will pay you large sums of money for them. That's when men were men, and they're not now. I can attest that I've heard you go on and on about cigarettes before. Oh, yeah. And my father used to say they got to the late 60s, early 70s, and the cigarettes changed. Right, but the canned cigarettes with 50 in it, Senior Service, Gold Flake, uh, Craven A. In fact, I opened three years ago here a 99-year-old can of Cravens that Frank Berla got for me. Wow. And they were in perfect condition. Wow. They blowed up. You want to make money, get the cans. I don't do internet. I have six computers. I don't even know where the button is or all at work. I mean, it took me, I'm just getting over the fax machine. <laughs> right. find, find me cans, call me. I'll do a trade. You want a bunch of frog? That's the way to do it. Do yep, it. that's the way. I want the cigarettes. You want the frog? Do it. Bring it to me. Well, the millions of viewers of this video now are on, on the hunt. Good. They're on the hunt. I expect a phone call this evening. You bet. <laughs> well, thanks for opening this up for us okay. and for this great interview. I enjoyed it. I appreciate always, all of you out there, and we're just going to keep doing it. We just love listening to you, yeah. so thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank you.